out here. Power Boaters is still asleep. They had a hell of a party last night. And, uh, yeah. Nice. Dog being rowed back to the boat. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice night. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, every night's been a nice night here. Uh, the whole trip, uh, nice N nights, not too hot. Uh, yeah, it's just perfect for sleeping. I'm a little plugged up this morning. Stanny plugged up. Nah, he's fine. Uh, well, we're gonna take off today. Uh, where are we going? I'm not sure. Uh, here we are. We're in McGregor Bay. With a little arrow. And I think. I think. Yeah, that's even better, isn't it? I think we're gonna go over here. Or there. Uh, here's one of the gruesome tasks I have to deal with every morning. Here's that gruesome task. I have to deal with these guys. And there's not one of them. A whole bunch of smaller ones. But, uh, there's another. There's another. There's another. There, oh, that one's a mess. There's another mess. Oh. Oh, I just splayed out. Okay, I gotta get the, uh, the rat traps out. Get rid of these guys. Out in the dinghy. Brian over there and I are wreck hunting. There's a wreck on the charts here. I think it's right over there. Let's go see if we can find it. Here's the shipwreck. Oh, there's the centerboard trunk right there. Right here. Wow. And there's the pivot bolt. Where? Up here at the front. It's huge. It's got to be probably six inches. Wow. So this was used for as a boat originally and then as a barge. Or was it a boat when it came here? No idea. They, typically the end of the lives of the schooners were as barges because steamships took over and the hulls were okay. That is pretty cool. 1700s and they thought of center boards. 1800s. 1800s. But 1700s too, I'm sure. Well, the Dutch had their lee boards back when, uh, it'd be 17. So look at the center board trunk. Oh yeah, on this side, there's a pin, a big washer and a pin. Pretty cool. And each one of these, uh, there's a giant square hole right here. Oh, okay, yeah. Right behind the center board trunk. And it, it splays out on the back, eh? Can, yes. Can you imagine the. I think. This is the stern. And that would be the keel going right through there. Look at the size of that. That keel timber. Well, this, yeah, probably the stern was out of the water for the rock to bounce with. Yeah, so this would, wouldn't even be the end of the boat. It'd be longer. Wow. And all these... Are they riveted? They're riveted. Nails and rivets holding those together. Wow. It's 
pretty amazing. <laughs> and to think these are these are one or well three different pieces of just tree individual pieces. And these spots over here where the sides came up, they were called knees or? The knees are like L brackets. Yeah, along here, along the sides. So this is what have been the bottom and it would have went up over there. So that time again, Stan, we're gonna take off. I got the Johnson running. I'm gonna haul the anchor up and away we go. And here we go. Are good. Dante's just hauling his anchor. So other guys. Here's Brian the Speed Demon. And we're off to Little Port Elgin. Just two miles over there through the woods or 14 miles around the Cape. We're good for the long way. We're sailing monkeys now, Stan. Just got the main up. Those guys, uh, they're a little slower, and they're going to have to tack to get out to where I am. So I'll just uh, take it easy with the main for now. How fast am I going? Let me tell you here. I am traveling at 1.1 knots. Pretty quick. Oh, 1.8, 2.3. Jeez, hang on. It's going to be a nice day again. As I was fumbling with my golf umbrella, thinking, do I ever miss golfing? Not a chance. Filthy, filthy sport, that. Look at that monster back there. That's one of the power boats that was rafted up in the cove. The, uh, there were three of them. Anyways, uh, He's gonna pass us, but he leaves a bit of a wake. I was right, he did leave a bit of a wake. <laughs> White caps on it. <sighs> Doesn't bother me at all. Oh, yet. Jesus, that's a one meter <laughs> wake. Look, that monkey's flying wing on wing. Good job, Stan. You're gonna have to watch that jib though, it's you know, a little playful. What do you mean we're out of Cheetos, Stan? Did you eat all the Cheetos? Hmm? My hands aren't on. We're out of Cheetos. Out of grapes too, but I just finished those. Oh, what are we going to do for snacks? Oh, pepperonis. You look way over there, you can see the Cape Croker Lighthouse. And you can see it's not working. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. But I've notified the Coast Guard. You'd think that they'd uh, <clears throat> get it working, right? Like. The lighthouse. There is a radio tower there that they're maybe saying to use. So radio tower is on the charts as well, or on the Navionics. I haven't checked my paper charts. I'm do that. <clears throat> See where what's there. Yeah, there's supposed to be a buoy out here too. I don't see the buoy. Hmm. Getting some more shots for the calendar. That is some odd. The electrical beater is back on, so somebody's kind of done some work to it. It should be lit during the day, and it's not lit. That's a, yeah, that's, I don't know. It's all the Coast Guard again. Here is our first sighting of shore dwelling tourists. They park near the lighthouse, and they're down exploring the Rocky Beach. Uh, 
taken refuge inside the cabin. We have gone 12.2 nautical miles in four hours, 10 minutes. And we're just about there. We're maybe one, two, three, four miles away from uh, our destination, which is straight ahead. Let me try and capture this. This is just beautiful. We're sailing straight towards little Port Elgin. Nice gentle breeze. We're doing about 2.2, 2.3 knots into the wind. Relaxing, eh, Stan? And look at you, you're falling over. You're falling asleep. You're supposed to be sailing the boat. <sighs> well, I guess I'll have to look after it. That's Dante. That's Hay Island. There's, uh, oh, that's the mainland. But that, uh, in between, it's White Cloud. And over there is Griffin. And our anchorage is over there, but we've decided to pull out today, so we're heading right to Wyerton. We're about, there we are. We're going down in here. It's about, uh, 10, 12 miles. Rudder's back there. Getting there. Just gonna knock down the mast and uh, tie it on, really. Uh, let's get moving, I guess. I'll get done if I don't do it. For those who wondered, this is how you empty your ballast tank. That's how fast it comes out. It's probably just as fast going in. Fills the lake back up. Just that, uh, that much. That's a little foggy. Can you see the fair? This carney's over there. It's a little better. There we go. There's a carnival happening. And here we are. And our boat's in the parking lot. Kind of in the lake. Zoomed in. There we go. Oh, I got my phone wet. I forgot about that. That's why it's a little foggy. It's a beautiful, calm night. I'm off to the showers. Clean. Showers are great here. Ah. I see the lights are on at the carnival. It's gonna be fun. 
Stan and I are gonna go over. <laughs> it's carnival. Yes. It is extra bright now. Yeah, it's nice and they're not burnt out. They change. Like that's programmable. Yeah, they can change lights. Yeah. Light colors. Safety dog, or the fire safety dog thing. Ah, <laughs> oh, fun, fun. <laughs> Brian and I took a walk around the midway. <laughs> well, it's uh, the carnies are in town. Locked my dinghy into the boat, so hopefully it's still there in the morning. <laughs> you never know with those carnies; they've got bad reputations. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Click, click you things, and uh, remember to get out and support your local carnival. They're raising money for the Rotary Club here, so it's important. Small town, they gotta have things for rotary it helps out <laughs> see where we get to tomorrow <laughs> no it was right <laughs>